Welcome to Success Insider, a podcast for emerging leaders and anyone seeking motivation, inspiration, and business or career advancement. Brought to you by Success Magazine. Listen, learn, grow. Learning is the beginning of wealth. Learning is the beginning of health. Learning is the beginning of spirituality. Searching and learning is where the miracle process begins. Those are the wise words of the incomparable speaker and author, Jim Rohn. On this week's episode, Josh and Shelby discuss the power of learning on the go and why podcasts are the future of personal growth. We hear from a few of the leading podcasters about why they feel the same, and Josh and Shelby share their favorite podcasts for you to listen to while you commute, clean, or whenever you have time to spare. And now our hosts, Shelby Skirhawk and Josh Ellis. S-H-E-L-B-Y, Shelby. S A E L B Y, <laughs> Shelby. Hi, Josh. How are you? Woo. Good. Just Good peppy of, start to the morning, huh? Yeah, just got out of a peppy meeting. Yeah. I'm I'm um, pepped up on coffee and you're ready to go. It's um it's incredibly bright outside as as uh, as we sit in here. So uh, it's I'm, a little bit I'm, of a change for us. We're recording this in the morning, so I'm wide gonna, awake. Yeah, we're gonna wipe the sleep from our eyes and. and I I haven't had my. Two thirds pound gut buster burger yet. <laughs> <laughs> what do you listen to on your drive into work? Well, thankfully it's short, but I will typically uh, crank on my uh, Pandora or my Amazon Music app. And, and the people and still use Pandora? Yeah. It's so I'm in that in between because I know everyone's using Spotify right now, but mm-hmm. I had subscribed for the year for like six months ago so i'm i'm gonna squeeze every every bit out of it so yes how about you well um i can neither carry a tune or uh judge what is good music i have a terrible taste in music famously terrible really uh so most of the time um i like listening to other people talk instead and oh. sometimes i listen to if i just want to like zone out and relax then i'll listen to uh, sports talk radio you know my my friends who called my uh, my boxing match. Yeah, listen to them sometimes. Um, but most of the time, I really prefer this um, ever revolving, ever improving, curated list of podcasts that I really like. And not just this one, because um, if you've ever heard it, then you know that the sound of your own voice <laughs> on recording <laughs> is uh, is terrible to listen to. So. Uh, so I don't listen to this one much, but right. I I love listening to other people who can, um, you know, with their uh, topics and discussions, can really um, kind of inform my growth and and fuel my mind. Well, that's that's probably a good uh, a good way to definitely fill your your time. I mean, I I know that the average travel time to work in the U.S. is like twenty five minutes. So, I mean, that's that's 50 minutes oh. a day. It's four hours a week. You know, it's a lot of time wasted. Shelby, that's a good day, 25 <laughs> minutes Yeah, for me, um, because I don't know what it is. People people just like to get in wrecks on, on the tollway, and I was the victim of that recently. You know that. Hmm. Um, but it's not the most infuriating thing because I do feel like uh, it's not time wasted. I'm yeah. I'm learning something. I'm growing. I'm becoming a better person because I devote um, that spare time to the noble pursuit or, or whatever you want to call it of of self improvement, of self growth. Right, and that's I think we're probably preaching to the choir here, but yeah, there's no better way to use that time when you're in your car when you've got basically your captive audience you've either got the the drone of road sounds mm-hmm. or you can turn on something that really gets your mind going so I, I think that's a great way to to use that time to to grow your brain grow your grow your um your personal development i guess yeah and, and i don't just do it in in the car i mean i do it at the grocery store i love to listen to podcasts when i'm cooking uh cleaning the house of course you know i'm i'm an overgrown baby so I I still play video games. Yeah. And that's a self-indulgent pursuit, you know, it's a it's it is a waste of time except I turn down the volume and turn up really? a podcast. Yeah. So how so, many are you listening to a week? Um 
you know, different ones of different links every week. I'm subscribed to about 30 podcasts. Wow. And it, you know, it just depends on where the mood strikes me. I'll learn about everything from, uh, you know, I, I follow the news, politics and things like that. Uh-huh. Um, but also um, really instructive podcasts that are great for um, for getting more out of myself too. Um, and, and so that time is really not wasted. It's basically the same as reading a book, right. reading an audio book. I'm, I'm, I'm growing. And, and, you know, Zig Ziglar, guy, guy that we love, um, he said once that when you finish school, you don't finish your education. It's a lifetime matter. And, you know, I, I think that we get so caught up in this idea that learning has to be done in a classroom setting um, or a book, because that's just more traditional, that we forget we have all throughout our day, every day, these like wisps of time, you know, that even if it's just five minutes, um, that we can take to boost ourselves um, with, it may just be a, a little tidbit, but a powerful tidbit, or an audio book. Audio books mm-hmm. work the same way as podcasts. Um, on personal growth or, or leadership or any topic that we, we really need. But what about some of these, these denser podcasts? I mean, you're not exactly able to take notes if you're driving or you're, you know, you're in the grocery store. Or, you know, so isn't being able to write those things down, as Jerome would say in a journal, to you know, not rely on your memory? Is, isn't that kind of a part in learning? Yeah, it, it is. And you can take mental notes if you're focused on it enough mm-hmm. and and but also you can you, you can kind of tell while you're listening if you're really enjoying it or not you know yeah, if it's clicking yeah so uh so those are the ones that you go back and listen to again again when uh when you are uh, a little bit more focused and are able to to scribble some things down right and that's true i mean it's not that you're absorbing every single piece of, of information in the podcast but you're you know when something is really clicking, when something when you have that kind of light bulb moment or that aha moment, like, yeah, that makes sense. That's that's the thing that I was looking for. And and there can be plenty of really dense podcasts, and we're gonna talk about some of those today that that have lots of information, but really the best podcasts are the ones that even inspire just one great idea, one thing that that really turns your your day around and, and kind of breathes new life into your efforts of, of what you're doing that day, what you're trying to accomplish. Yeah, and, and obviously we're preaching to the choir yeah, here yeah. Um, because the folks listening to this, uh, you get the memo. Uh, we know that. You, you, you like to learn, you like to improve yourself, and you like to learn and improve yourself on the go. Uh, you are a success insider listener. Um, but that doesn't mean that we uh, can be you know, your only brand. You can branch out, and um, I, I think that a rising tide lifts all ships, and and it certainly would lift the the, uh, the ships of our uh, our listeners. So, let's hear from some others who know the value of audio, in particular, podcasts, because these are the hosts of some of the most popular podcasts out there. My name is Lewis Howes. I'm the host of the School of Greatness podcast, one of the top 100 podcasts in the world with 1.5 million downloads a month. And I'm a New York Times bestselling author. And I believe podcasts are such a powerful medium for helping people to learn and grow. I started my podcast four years ago doing one episode a week. And it took off because of the nature of podcasts and how they're done. Most of the time, people are listening while they're working out, while they're waking up and starting their day, when they're commuting. So they're they're activating their mind and they want to learn something on their time, on demand. They don't have to wait for it. They can press play and listen to it at any time. And you're activated in their ears. Usually people are wearing headphones and you're being so present and informational during this time for 30 to 60 minutes or however long your podcasts are, mine are an hour. And therefore you're activating someone's mind and learning and growing during this time of day when they wanna learn the most. So it's a powerful way. You've just gotta make sure you're consistent with it, that you are diligent in the production value, you're trying to optimize your teaching and you're not giving fluff. And that'll really support you in increasing your business, but also helping other people learn and grow as well. 
Hey there, it's Jonathan Fields, producer and host of Good Life Project Podcast. So why do I think podcasts are a really powerful medium? You know, this really came to me a couple of years back when I was having a conversation with a well-known public radio producer, and we were producing video at the time, and I was considering a move to audio, and I wasn't sure whether it would be podcast or public radio. And I kind of said to her, you know, I was really interested in public radio, and she asked me why, and I said, well, well, the reach, I mean, there's tremendous reach on public radio. And she kind of tilted her head to the side and raised an eyebrow like I wasn't getting it. And I said, what am I missing here? And she said, well, yeah, there is a lot of really great reach in public radio. And, and truth is, these days, podcasting is exploding reach-wise, too. But that's not the big benefit. The big difference is that audio is an incredibly intimate medium. It's different than video. It's different than print. Because essentially, it's your voice um, just entering the ears and the brain and the intellect and the wisdom of the person listening. It's like you're having a conversation with them. And then they get to form the visual around that. And in that moment, I really awakened to the power of audio. And we started to produce um, standalone audio content and eventually made the shift entirely from video to audio and decided to focus entirely on podcasting. And I found her words to be incredibly resonant and true. Audio is an incredibly intimate medium. You're hearing my voice in your ears very likely right now through headphones, you know, literally channeling straight into you. And it develops a sense of knowing, a sense of rapport, a sense of comfort, trust, and ease that's really hard to replicate in another medium. And because of that, it creates an opportunity for transmission and change in a really differentiated way. So those are my thoughts on how podcasting can become a really powerful medium and really have the ability to help people change their lives um, in a meaningful way that is different than any other form of media. Signing off, this is Jonathan Fields again from Good Life Project Podcast. Hey, this is John Lee Dumas, the founder and host of the award-winning podcast, EO Fire, where I interview today's most inspiring and successful entrepreneurs seven days a week. I've interviewed over 1,600 entrepreneurs to date to include Darren Hardy, Tim Ferriss, Gary Vaynerchuk, Tony Robbins, Damon John, Barbara Corcoran, and many, many more. We talk about their failures, their successes, their aha moments, and really pull out their lessons learned. I'm personally really excited to see Success Magazine continue to rock the podcasting world because this medium is special. It's free, it's on demand, it's targeted content that allows you, the listener, to consume it when and where and how you want. Whether you're driving in your car, whether you're running on the beach, whether you're folding laundry, walking your dog, whatever it might be, you can listen and you can learn. It's a very intimate form of communication as well. Like You feel like you get to know the host. It really seems like you can live the story and the lessons that come from this great medium of podcasting. So 2017 is an amazing year for the podcasting world. I'm honored and touched that Success Magazine reached out for me to contribute to today's episode. So I hope that you have a wonderful year and prepare to ignite. All right, Josh, so as promised, we put together our own list, our, our must-listen list of the top 10 podcasts to uh, to help you live a full, successful, happy life. We're going to go over some of those now. Yeah, and um, we should note these are not ranked in any particular order. We just chose our uh, favorite 10 to share. So um, the order doesn't mean a thing. In fact, imagine that we... Uh, wrote them out all on, on a deck of cards and shuffled it up real good. Right. All right, Josh, so to uh, kick off this not countdown of top 10 podcasts, um, I'm going to start with uh, one particular one. It's Happier with Gretchen Rubin. Happier. So as you know, Gretchen Rubin, she's the author of The Happiness Project, uh, also a book named uh, Better Than Before. But so on this particular podcast, she and her sister, Elizabeth Kraft, they sit down and, and they talk. They kind of just have some real, real fresh real talk about um, a lot of the the happiness movements out there. Um, I think one of the my favorite pieces of that is the try this at home segment. Mm-hmm. I think that's certainly a popular popular thing with their readers, but it's it's a great great listen. Gretchen obviously has had a lot of success um, as an author, yeah, number one bestseller. Um, and we've featured her in uh, success before. Um, but 
the podcast is is one that I know you really love. And, and what is it about her in the audio format that uh, you particularly enjoy? I just like that she's very endearing. And maybe it's just the funny relationship between she and her sister. Mm-hmm. Uh, I think that inter- that lends an interesting dynamic that I think especially with some of the, the dual host podcasts, um, hopefully company present company included it just it brings an, another level of, of depth of, of discussion and really kind of brings open the the topic instead of just a monologue if you will right you can kind of play ideas off of yeah, each other yeah. and even pretend that you really like one another <laughs> <laughs> ha 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 fake ha, ha, ha. yes uh, good good acting mm-hmm. um okay uh so next up on the list uh how about uh, the school of greatness with lewis house yeah so uh he's also got a book by the same title school of greatness and a lot of interviews with authors and experts and uh, people who are just living the life, right? You know, the, the life they want, no matter what. Yeah, he's, he's a charismatic guy. I know that the episodes are, are pretty meaty. They're, you know, mostly about an hour long. Mm-hmm. And he, when he sits down and does these interviews, uh, you know, he, he does have a lot of conversation back and forth with these thought leaders. But um you know, it's something that's it's really, really grown him quite an audience, quite a following. He's he's doing some great stuff. Next up is a guy that I know well. Um, I wrote a success cover story on him. I've interviewed him a couple times for success talks. Don't be surprised if he turns up here at some point down the line. It's uh, it's Tim Ferriss. Tim Ferriss is uh, a self experimenter. He he's. Uh, multi multi time best selling author. The first book was the biggest hit, the Four Hour Work Week. But yep. his latest one is really um, a huge hit too, and it might end up surpassing it. It's Tools of Titans, where he kind of did what we do, which is basically gather um, all the best methods and mantras of the most successful people and and compile them together. And um, you know, the New York Times famously called him a <laughs> cross between Jack Welch, the old. Um, General Electric boss and uh, a Buddhist monk. Wow. Uh, and I, I think that's that's probably pretty appropriate. Tim's show is really interesting. It's mostly interview based, mm-hmm. um, although he will do frequently, um, you know, questions back and forth. But he gets so deep with the people he's interviewing, and I am interested in becoming as devoted to being my personal best as he is. And I think that that's really infectious with his podcast. Yeah, great stuff. So next up on the list is The Art of Charm. This is somebody that we've had on the show recently, Jordan Harbinger. This is a, f- a favorite of yours, right? Uh, I, You know, of everything on this list, I've probably listened to Jordan's show the most, The Art of Charm. Um, and it really, for me... <laughs> He started out as, and the Art of Charm started out as like a dating school for dudes, yeah. right? Um, but I was actually turned on to the podcast by a, um, a an old friend of mine who happens to be a woman. Um, so it's not just that anymore. He's he's way evolved to be for for you know applicable for all audiences, and it's totally G rated. And it's not in any way like slimy, like you think of dating schools. It's actually about like helping people be more confident. And, mm-hmm. and when I picked it up, I was I was getting out of a long term relationship, and so I didn't uh, like remember how to date or remember how to be like uh, open to meeting new people and stuff yeah. like that. So charm, I, I think, as he defines it, is really just about how to um, put the people around you to make them feel comfortable. That's charm. Your own confidence is a big part of that. So for me, when I started listening to it, um, I, I was really interested in, in all the, the guests and the methods that Jordan teaches about growing your confidence. And, and that's what we had him on Success Insider for uh, recently. So this isn't the uh, the old seduce and destroy how to how to make women fall for you madly and, and, and get them to will to your ways. Like this is true confidence and how and, and learning how to be comfortable in your own skin yeah and how to put your best foot forward for other people and i think basically the ultimate where he arrives on dating it, it, there's the seduce and destroy thing is ridiculous <laughs> of course um but you want to know how to be like appealing to women or men right um is just be a good person and yeah. you will attract people and right. that's basically what he arrives on it's a, it's a it's a really interesting show week after week Next on the list is the Entre Leadership Podcast. Say that five times fast. Uh, this is hosted by Ken Coleman. Now, 
we uh, I met Ken Coleman, gosh, at least five years ago. He was just about to start a new show. Um, he had a book coming out, and uh, he's really just a really dynamic guy. I need to, Ken, we're going to let you know that you're on this list, and we're going to give you a call and, and ask you to come on the show because um, I forgot what an engaging guy mm-hmm. Ken really is. He's a great interviewer, and he's had some of the, you know, some, some top names, um, certainly within our industry, uh, Mark Cuban, Seth Godin, Jim Collins, Simon Sinek, you know, big, big, good names that are really thought leaders out there. Yeah. One of my first stories when I got to success, maybe my first was um, I was interviewing Ken Coleman. He had a new book coming out yeah. where he asked um, a lot of really impactful people one question. He only gave himself one right. question to ask them and um, a real test to see if he could come up with the one perfect question. If you could ask John McCain, like POW war hero, statesman, uh, one question about uh, that that would be beneficial to yourself or your reader. What would you ask him? And and, a fascinating book. Uh, All right. Next is Marie Forleo, the Marie Forleo podcast. She was named by Oprah as a, um, a thought leader for the next generation. She was one of Inc.'s 500 fastest growing companies, her company. Um, and the goal for Marie is is to help you become the person that you most want to be. Um, the show is, along with the guest, um, Marie shares strategies for happiness and success and creativity, motivation, productivity, everything. Yeah, and, and she's got such an engaging personality to her. I mean, she, she really seems just warm and genuine, and, and I think that... Uh, that's infectious, certainly, when she speaks to her guests, and 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 she's just a likable person to to listen to and and to to follow. Then next up, uh, the Tony Robbins podcast. Uh, you know, I, I've I've heard uh, when sometimes when the uh, the people are voting for like the Pro Football Hall of Fame, if somebody's like an obvious Hall of Famer, mm-hmm. you know, instead of debating it, they'll just get up on the stage and the presenter will say. Jerry Rice, and then he'll walk off the stage. And, and like in other in other cases, when it's more debatable, they'll talk for forty five minutes about the person, or three hours, or whatever. But yeah. but I think that we can just say Tony Robbins. Uh, the uh, he is uh, the rock star in sort of our uh, industry. You know, you you know, you're always going to get good, impactful, um, and maybe even if it catches you in the right mood, life changing stuff from Tony Robbins. All right. So next on the list of the top 10 podcasts, Motley Fool Money. So Motley Fool is actually, they've been around a while. It's a financial site that was started by by analysts that really kind of gave some of, at first, some contrarian advice, uh, but it was really, it was advice for, for real people. Um, and so then this, this, I guess, franchise has developed into a podcast and, and really it's Truly, it's an, a radio show. I mean, it's it's weekly across uh, several top ten markets. I think L.A., San Francisco, uh, Boston, D.C. But this this show dives into a lot of the top business stories and investing stories, and it's a really engaging dive into markets from a different take. Well, I know that. I mean, they do stock tips, mm-hmm. right? I'm always a little leery of taking. Stock tips from anyone that's on TV or on the radio, you know, I feel, I feel like if everybody knows about it, like, I don't know. I just, I just feel like if you're broadcasting stock tips that it's manipulative in a way to the stock itself, it's almost like Schrodinger's cat. You know, we start looking at this stock and because we say it's going to be bad, then it starts to be bad. Or because we say it's going to be good, then it starts to be good. And that can definitely happen. I think though, they've been around so long uh, it's not that uh, they got their start on, on TV and, and just all of a sudden started picking stocks out of a hat. I think their big thing was uh, was based in research and, and then really just trying to make the research usable for everyday people. And so because they had done this for so long on their website, um, I followed them for a while. I haven't kept up a lot lately, but... They, they really do give some great advice and it doesn't feel swarmy or, or disingenuine at all because they know their stuff. Next up is a former success cover gal. A lot of people that we've covered in the magazine yeah. turn up on this list, but it's uh, the Jillian Michaels show. Jillian Michaels is uh, America's health and wellness guru, I would say. Yep. The show is entertaining, it's inspirational, informative, 
uh, and it just gives tools to find health and happiness in all areas of your life. So rounding out this top 10 list is EO Fire with John Lee DeMoss. He's got quite the cast of guests. Yeah, some of the brightest minds. Tim uh, Ferriss, Tony Robbins, Gary Vaynerchuk. Josh Ellis. Josh Ellis, yeah. <laughs> I was a guest on EO Fire. And what did you say, O'Neill? What did you say? What did I say? Yes. I don't know. We talked for like 30 minutes. All right. I what said was, a lot of What things. was your best best nugget? Well, you don't adult. remember that. You remember the worst. <laughs> okay. What right? was the worst thing you said? And so he, he, to- he totally caught me off guard with one question. He's like, what is one thing that you do that no one else does? Hmm. And I was just stumped and, you know, it's dead air. So you got to hurry up and say something. And so I was like, I, I always work with a pencil. <laughs> Which is true. I yeah, do. That's I, true. I do. I don't like pens. Um, As you've got a pencil in your hair right I, now. In my ear. It's not in my hair. There's a big difference. Okay. Is that a girl thing to have it in your hair? Uh, yeah, it's behind my ear, not in my ear. Okay. There's a big difference <laughs> in that too. Yeah. Um, but <laughs> like, and then I tried to fumble for some explanation of, ah, oh, that way you can make up for your mistakes. And it, as a magazine editor, I always. <laughs> you tried to round that out. <laughs> yeah. And some wisdom. Um, it really showed me that he. He keeps his guests on their toes. And uh, so you can um, get some really good stuff from some people who think a lot faster than I do. (laughs) It's worth listening to. Yeah, so certainly podcasts are a huge, huge genre. And so it's hard to really nail down just 10. Uh, When we are compiling the podcasts that we really liked and and, and felt like um, our audience would most enjoy, it really was hard to, to nail it down to just that number. So... I wanted to mention just a few others that uh, that I'm particularly fond of. Yeah, yeah. All right, so the Jocko podcast. Yeah, if you aren't familiar with Jocko Willink, I think you're going to be hearing a lot more about him soon. I have a feeling. Um, maybe from Success Magazine and Success Insider and Success Talks. We got Jocko on the cover of our April issue, former Navy SEAL and just really, like, motivating guy. This guy, like, I mean, he's the typical, like, eats lead and spits out bullets yeah. kind of dude um girl boss radio is another great one with sophie amoruso another former cover gal of ours and that's that that show is particularly geared toward women women entrepreneurs women uh, working uh, their way up in their careers how about uh, some other ones like 10 percent happier with dan harris is great seth godin's startup school um the side hustle school smart passive income online this is your life with michael hyatt and Oh, I love this one too. The Charged Life with uh, Brendan Burchard. Yeah, Brendan's uh, a good friend of success. Really inspiring guy too um, with his story um, of just where he was in his life after a terrible car wreck, going through the worst breakup of his life and right. um, how he pulled himself out of uh, that sort of misery, Yeah, um, which we all go through from time to time, how he did it with by really zeroing in on personal development lessons and The three things that mattered most to him. Yeah, inspiring guy. So we definitely suggest that you add uh, some of these to your morning or evening commute or your video game time or whatever whatever it is where uh, you uh, have extra brain space. You can learn a lot from these podcasts. Well, that wraps things up for this week. But before we let you go, I wanted to discuss a letter that we got from one of our loyal subscribers. This one is from Meredith Eddins from Fort Smith, Arkansas. She writes, and loyal is the right word, I think, Shelby. She writes, success is such an amazing magazine. I always look forward to it. My kids and I listen to the interviews on road trips. While on a recent trip, two of my sons and I were listening to the interview with Tony Robbins. He had some valuable things to say. However, I was incredibly disappointed by his use of profanity throughout the interview. I've taught my kids that vulgar language is lazy, uneducated, and just plain stupid. So the fact that Mr. Robbins chose to use such inappropriate language was very disappointing. Your magazine can do better. We all can do better. This audio provided a teachable moment to my children, just not the one we were expecting. I will continue to read the magazine and listen to the podcast. I just never thought I would have to screen it before sharing it with my kids. Thank you, Meredith. Um, You know, obviously, like, we're aware when Tony Robbins cusses that uh, not everyone wants to hear that. Um, 
but it, we make that call for a reason to leave that in because he makes that call for a reason. It's not that he's uh, just uh, some lout who can't control himself. And he is like the most uh, well-respected and um, most proven inspirational leader in the game. And he decided a long ago that he can get people's attention that way. And uh, if you're having a, a hard time in your life, then 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 you do need to give him your attention. If that's what it takes, obviously you listen to it, Meredith. And I, I am sorry that that your kids uh, were picked up on it, um, but uh, you know I, I I do think that not all cuss words, if they're not meant to be derogatory or to to be hurtful, if he's using them um, for effect. Then I think that they they serve just that purpose. They are for effect, and um, I, I do thank you for uh, for writing in. I, I will consider things again uh, the next time we interview Tony. I do have to say though that you don't expect to have to censor or, or screen content. I mean, you know, for the most part, if you read anything on Success.com or listen to anything, it, it's going to be clean because it's that's not our. Our brand isn't salacious, so you're right. And actually, that's something that I don't think a lot of people realize is just how much Tony cussed me. <laughs> I, I didn't know that before I watched the documentary, and I was shocked, honestly. And other people that I talked to that like know of Tony Robbins, but like didn't like they'd never been to his one of his events or anything. So when they see him talk, he's usually on like live television or something, mm-hmm. and he's not dropping f bombs. But he talk, <laughs> he cusses a lot, so I, I I can see what she's saying that. If you don't know that that is part of his brand, yep. his his real brand, I guess you know, in person type of uh, type of thing, it, it can kind of catch you off guard. So I, I see what she's saying. And I I, I will say, Meredith, that we uh, again do apologize for um, exposing your kids to that. Uh, I do hope that they learned something, and I hope that Tony got their attention and, and that that they can um, be inspired and, and grow themselves based on the you know, the actual substance of what he said. So we do appreciate your feedback, positive and negative. We don't shy away from the negative things, um, but we always do appreciate the positive. So you can share that stuff too. We just love uh, hearing from you. So please always tell us what you think by emailing us at you at success.com. Until next week, I'm Shelby. And I'm Josh. And here is to learning on the go. Those are the wise words of the incomparable speaker and author. Oh my God, incomparable. I got it, Mariana. Nope, I got, I'm going to get it, incomparable. Those are the wise words of the incomparable speaker and author, Jim Rohn. Oh my God, incomparable. Mariana, oh my God, what am I going to do with myself? I hope you're not on a time schedule because we are going to be here for a while.